All right, uh, we're, we're talking about heaven and hell. And we talked about heaven. We've been uh, recently talking about hell, seeing what the Bible says about it. What have we learned about hell so far? Different levels. Huh? Different levels. Yeah, there are different levels. Yes, different, uh, different levels of uh, torment. Yeah. Hell is tolerable. But what's the other word that came up over and over again? Torment. So if we were to summarize what's hell like, there are two words that are found in Scripture. Torment and tolerable. Tolerable torment. Would eternal fall in there? Well, yes. You can add that too. Eternal, tolerable, torment. Now, how's that different than what many of us have been taught? Uh, what, how's that different than the traditional view of hell? Fire. Well, there could be fire. A lot of people always say it was intolerable. Yeah. The, the word that comes up in the literature, frankly, is the word intolerable. That it's intolerable torment. There's a pretty, there's a, I mean, torment is torment. On the other hand, Tolerable torment is not the same as intolerable torment, obviously. So we don't want to soften it, but we don't want to make it harder. We won't want to make hell a pleasant experience because it's not. It's torment. On the other hand, we don't want to say more than what the scriptures say, which is what has been taught, I guess, for, well, for centuries. And it's a very uh, difficult pill for people to swallow that there is a place of intolerable torment, bad enough that it's tolerable torment. Well, that's kind of what we learned about hell so far. Is part of the tor tor torment uh, total darkness and separation? I don't know that the scriptures teach total darkness about hell. There is, the scriptures do use the term black darkness, I think, of hell, but doesn't could be more of a metaphorical term because like um, when we saw the rich man in hell in the story of Jesus, he could see, he could see Abraham, he could see uh, Lazarus across the chasm apparently, so it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't seem to indicate that it's a place of total darkness. Most of my life anyway, we've been taught that hell was a lake of fire, you know, basically the term was going to burn in hell. Yeah. Yeah, and I, there's nothing that says that a person will burn in hell. Right. It says that there were there there's a place of flames and fire, but doesn't mean the person themselves is in the flame or fire. He's surrounded by flame and fire. But as we talked before, if a person was in a flame of fire, what would their voice sound like? Screaming, Screaming in torment, and we don't see that in scripture. We see the rich man carrying on a conversation, a logical thought uh, provoked conversation with Abraham. He's not screaming in torment. Now he does say it's torment. He doesn't want his brothers to come. To come. We're going to read that later, um, maybe today. What do you think it means when it says the smoke of their torment shall ascend up forever? Uh, they're in a place of fire and smoke. It's a, the, the torment that is around them. It doesn't say that they themselves are on fire. It's the smoke of their torment, not, not, not their, the smoke of their bodies. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it's kind of like the burning bush, you know? It's on fire, but it didn't burn up. Yeah, you could yeah. kind of think of it that way. Got a fire. Mm -hmm. The word tolerate itself, if you use the word intolerate, means it can't be tolerated. Yeah. Well, it has to be tolerated because it lasts forever. It's yeah. Forever. Yeah. Okay. So those are some of the clues that we got. Uh, by the way, is there a hell? Yes. How do we know that? Yes. Scripture says, and who, whose words do we look at in particular? Jesus. 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 It's very clear that Jesus says there's a hell. So. Um, that's really where we started, the reality of hell. 
If we say there's no hell, then what are we saying about about yeah Jesus is a liar, and that, I don't think we want to go there. So if we accept that Jesus is the truth, then we'd have to accept that the reality of hell. All right today, I want to uh, talk about why do people go to hell? Why do people go to hell? Let's start with uh, John chapter one. Chapter, uh, excuse me, John, uh, chapter one, verse twenty-nine. John one twenty-nine. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of what? World. The world. So, whose sins did Jesus take away when he died? The world. The world. Everybody. Everybody." Everybody, and that means that the, he paid the penalty for the sins of the world. It doesn't say who takes away the sin of believers. I'm pausing here so we can think about this. It didn't say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of believers, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus took away the what I would call the barrier of sin. You know, the Bible says we didn't turn to it. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. So everybody had sinned and separated from God, but Jesus took away that barrier of sin. So this is and uh, this might be a question that you're not ready for, but I'm going to ask you. Do people go to hell because of their sin? No, no, no. Good, you seemed ready for that. <laughs> and uh, why would you say that? Because Jesus failed for all. Right, he took away the sin of the world. So <clears throat> nobody goes to hell because of their sin. And this, I would say, is the common view, wouldn't you? Yes. You know, you're, you're in hell because of your sin. And... Uh, that's not what this passage teaches, and there, there are others, but um, we have to, well, if people aren't in hell because of their sin, why are they in hell? And if you turn over to chapter 3, uh, verse 18, well, yeah, 318. He who believes in him, and, you know, I didn't get the context here, but who's the him? Jesus. 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 This is right after John 3.16, obviously. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not, what? Believed. In the name of the only begotten Son of God. So why do people go to... Why are people condemned? Yeah, it's not because of their sin, it's because they didn't believe. Jesus uh, took away the barrier of sin. Sin is not the issue. What is the issue? Yeah, yeah and I could have said, who is the issue? Jesus. It's not what does a person do about their sin, it's what does a person do about Jesus. So if they believe in Jesus, they're not condemned. If they don't believe in Jesus, they are condemned. Jesus changed, he took away the issue of sin when he died and took away the sin of the world. The issue is, what does a person do with Jesus? Do they believe in him for eternal life or not believe in him for eternal life? Question about that? So this, if people went to hell because of their sin, and even believers would go to hell because we still sin. Yeah. And so everybody would end up in hell. Everybody would end up in hell if Jesus hadn't died on the cross for our sins. 
they hadn't taken away the sin of the world. I think even a lot of Christians uh, stumble over this, thinking that the reason a person would go to hell is because of their sin. That's not true. They go to hell because they haven't believed in Jesus for eternal life. Because we're all, we're, we're all sinners. We all are deserving of hell. Yeah, but Jesus took away that. That's not, that's not the issue. On the other side of that coin, not only did he take away the sin of the world, including our sin, but he gave us his perfect righteousness so we can stand before the throne of God. Absolutely. If we just didn't have any sin, we still wouldn't be perfect. That's right. We, we wouldn't be able to stand before God. So it's two things. He took our sin away and gave us his righteousness. Yeah, that's true. Righteousness. Because... Uh, and, but the, and, and even there, that still underscores that the issue is Jesus. Jesus. Believe in him for eternal life or not believe in him for eternal life. All right, uh, with that as a background, let's turn to Revelation 20 because this is kind of the, uh, I guess you could say, capstone of this whole issue about hell. There's so much in here. Uh, Revelation 20. I want to just quickly look at verse 7. The, just the first part of verse 7. When the thousand years have expired. Okay, I just want to, we need a time frame for what we're going to read down when we start in verse 11. Okay, what does he mean by the thousand years? Year. What? Okay. Uh, the thousand years of Christ's reign on this earth. When Jesus returns, he's going to reign on this earth for a thousand years. Now, after the thousand years, skip down to verse uh, 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one, according to his work. Then death and Hades were cast into, the, into what? This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's a lot in these verses. Um, I think this, first of all, I want to point out uh, something that's already come up here. Uh, are people in the lake of fire today? No. no. Where are they? Yes. Hades or hell? Uh, the lake of fire, people don't go to the lake of fire until after the thousand years. This passage teaches that they leave Hades they come out of Hades and then they go, they come before this judgment and then they go uh, to the lake of fire. So uh, that's one thing that came up in our previous discussions. I just thought I'd point it out here that hell is a temporary place. The lake of fire is the uh, permanent place. But they're very, I think they're very similar. It's kind of like the, the county jail and the state prison. You know, they're similar, right? But they're not the same. And uh, Hades is like the county jail. It's the temporary uh, holding place until these people have their day in court. And then this is the day in court, and the judgment, the final judgment is made, and then they go to the um, lake of fire. Well, uh, the lake of fire... Is, I'm thinking of 
a lake of water, you're in the water. If you're in a lake of fire, you're in the fire. It's well, a lake. Uh -huh. That's just a thought. This is a picture I get from that. Yeah, I understand. Word. Yeah. And you go by green, Bob, when you say that, I mean, the scriptures teaches that there are going to be some people that's going to be deeper into the pit than others. Mm -hmm. I understand. Be deeper than Maybe closer to God in, in, in heaven, but further away from the light and darkness, maybe. More yeah, dark, more it, it could. Yeah, it could be that there's some metaphorical thought here that it's it's like a you know it's it's like a lake of fire. It's a place that's not a pleasant place. It's not a that the person isn't in a literal lake of fire. It could be that a person is on a planet where there is a lake of fire, and and maybe he's on an island uh, on the lake. That would be my thought. Is he's, you know, like in Hades, we saw with the rich man in Hades, he was surrounded. Kind of, we, it was kind of the picture. He was surrounded by fire. It could be that there there are islands on the lake, and they're they're in the midst of a lake of fire. I I can't answer it totally. I just know that it's not if it was into physically a lake of fire, that would not be tolerable. Jesus said that the torments of hell are tolerable. So, But that, that place is eternal, just like heaven is eternal. It's, it's not like what we know. Like the bush burned, but it never burned up. It's not a fire like what we think of. Yeah. Touch it, and you, it's agonizing. Pain. That's another good kind of yeah. fire. That's you, not, that, that's said, a, Go ahead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fire, but they were not consumed by the fire. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They were in it. That's a good point. Would, would fire be a metaphor for like eternal judgment? Uh, it could be. Constant, you know, constant judgment, their realization of the judgment that they're in and condemnation and separation it, forever. Yeah, you know, the Bible does use the word fire metaphorically. Like, the Bible says that we go through fiery trials. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, that doesn't mean that this is we go through literal fire, but it's a metaphorical description of trials. It's very difficult and hard and troublesome. It could be that there is some metaphorical thought here to the... We know it's a, a literal place, we know that these are literal people in physical bodies. Uh, we know that he calls it the lake of fire, but I think Douglas made a good point. Uh, fire is not eternal, as we know it. Eventually, it, it burns itself out, unless it's got a, a source. But this is an eternal fire with an eternal source, I guess you could say. And it may be a different... It may be fire different than we know it. It could be different physically than we know it. It could be a me uh, partly a metaphorical description like what you're bringing up. Uh, I don't pretend uh, at all to be able to exactly describe exactly what the lake of fire is like. We don't have much to go on. It's just a lot of thought provoking words here. Well, the, the people in hell, they'll have physical bodies, right? Yeah, we're going to, yeah. yes. Well, they're, they're not going to age. They're not going to die of old age like we do. They're going to have physical bodies in the lake of fire. Yeah, so, yeah. So their bodies are different in some way, at least, because they're not going to die of old age. But we're right. going to die of old age in heaven. They're going to right. have a eternal body with their germs. We're, we're talking about hell and about fires in hell and people in hell like, like we are now. Yeah. Well, it's not like we are now. That's a good point. Now, it's, it's hard to grasp, you know, it's hard to grasp what a resurrected body will be like because we've never lived in one, a glorified body. But we know that our bodies, as believers, will never age, just will stay the same forever in that state. And I think it's safe to say that the bodies of these people will not age either. They will be in a fixed physical state that's different than than now. So you've got a good point. I mean the the 
the bodies of these unsaved people may have a different uh, nature or comp a capacity or uh, their senses might be a little bit different than they are in the bodies that we know as far as what they feel and what they experience. I don't know. That's a good a good uh, point. What we read last week about Lazarus, he said, uh, "Get sin Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his fingers in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame." Not a flame that's around him, but like I say, it's God's flame. Well, again, it's not a man flame. It could be in the midst of the flame. In the flame could be, like C.B. brought up a good illustration, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the furnace, but they weren't being consumed by the flame. Yeah. <coughs> of course, theirs, yeah, I'm sure theirs was a much more pleasant experience. Uh, <laughs> they were being protected, but the point is they were in the midst of flames and not being consumed by them. In speaks again in 21.8, about the cowardly unbelieving and all the murder, sexual and moral sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. It seems to me like you would say it actually burns with fire and brimstone. Yes. So they're fine. And yeah. But just like your point, their part in the lake. Also have their part. Yes. Which means to me different parts. And you have their part, you know, that will be their parts. And each will have their Each will have their part. Their part. Different experience. And we've already seen it's not going to be the same for everybody. I, I think that helps me helps yeah. to clarify what you're saying. Yes, each has their part, their part. according to their, their, judgment, their judgment, which we're going to look at here some more, but that's a good point. All right, let's try to work our way through this uh, paragraph on the great white throne judgment. Verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no place, there was found no place for them. Okay, it's a great white throne that John sees. Who, who might we guess is sitting on that... Um, Jesus. 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 Doesn't say Jesus, so why are you guessing Jesus? All judgment yeah. is committed to him. Yes, John 5, 24, I think it is. All judgment has been committed to the Son. Uh, where else will Jesus be the judge? The mercy seat. Uh, the judgment seat of Christ, yes. The judgment seat of Christ is a separate judgment Who's going to be judged at the judgment seat? Believers. 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 And what will be the issue at the judgment seat of Christ? Rewards. Yeah, what will be your reward in the kingdom? This is a totally different judgment. And by the way, let me back up. When does the judgment seat of Christ occur? Yeah, in relation to the thousand years, when, when does it? Yeah, before the thousand years. That's when the judge. That's when believers are judged. This is a judgment of unbelievers that takes place after the thousand years. This is called the Great White Throne Judgment, not to be confused with the Judgment Seat of Christ. Those are two completely different judgments. Okay, say which two of those are again. Which one's which? Which is the start of the thousand years? Judgment, judgment Seat of Christ. Judgment Seat of Christ. Which we aren't looking up. You're, I'm just. Yeah. That's not our topic today, but uh, judgment seat. And when's the other one? After, yeah. we're reading it after right. after the thousand years, okay. the Great White Throne. So Hades is like county jail, like you said, and people may not feel like they should be there, but then they get their day in court, and then uh, they have the rest of. Fire to yes, or you, you said it well. And I, I doubt that we'll get to it this week, but we're going to talk probably next week about what do people in hell believe. But uh, 
you're already onto it a little bit. People go to county jail. They haven't had their day in court yet. They go to county jail awaiting their day in court. And they come to their day in court to present their case, hoping that the judge will let them go. Now, some of them get let go. But I guess I guess most of them end up in the state pen because they didn't pass the judgment of the judge. So what we have here is people that have been in Hades awaiting their day of judgment. This is their day of judgment. And then it will be determined where they go next based on the evidence that's presented. Uh, the, uh, yes and no. If it was already determined, okay, you, I know what you're saying. <laughs> you don't want to be a descendant. It's a wrong court. Yeah, but it, and but they need to be shown. Jesus is a just judge, right? He's totally just and fair, and he wants everyone to understand their judgment. And that's what he does here. It, there's, there's books that are opened. Th these books are the evidence in the courtroom as to where each of these people stand in terms of their eternal destiny. We're going to look at that. Okay. So let me read verse 11 again. I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no place there was found no place for them. Uh, what's that a reference to? The earth and heaven fled away. There was no place found for them. Do you know? The new earth Sounds like a flood. Yeah. The new earth is coming if we read ahead. This is a reference that the old earth and what would heaven refer to here? When you read heaven, if you've been in the Bible study or maybe you already know this, what do you need to ask when you read the word heaven? Yeah, which heaven? Are we talking about the atmosphere, outer space, or the third heaven where God dwells. When it says here the earth and heaven fled away, what, what should we? Atmosphere yeah. and space. At least the atmosphere and probably a reference to the second heaven, which is the sun, uh, the sun, moon, and stars. Certainly not the third heaven where God dwells. We know that for sure because of what we read in... Uh, Chapter well, twenty one. It makes sense because of the height of the new city. Yeah. Because of, you know, normal Yeah. And the end of the yeah, and Yeah, and I'll I'll add to this. It'd be pretty hard to destroy this earth without destroying the atmosphere as well. I mean yeah, right. where would that how could you preserve the atmosphere yeah. if there was no earth? So um, that's what this means. This this is the point where the this earth and, that, and the, the heavens around it are totally destroyed. When we get to chapter, well, skip ahead. Look at verse, uh, chapter 21, verse 1. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sea. So there, that underscores what I was saying, or what John wrote um, that's what verse 11 refers to. Okay, question or comment about verse 11? Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. I want to stop there. Who would the dead? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Spiritually dead? What clue is there to tell you that they're spiritually dead? They're standing. They're standing. So what's that tell you about dead? They, yeah, they're they're alive, right? They're spiritually dead. They're spi that has to be spiritually. Dead. They're alive. They're they're standing there before the throne. They're not physically dead, but they are. The only the only dead 
that we could use to explain this, they don't have God's life. They're spiritually uh, dead. What would it mean, small and great? Rich and poor. People in their status in this yeah. all of history. Exactly. All the great people of history and all the uh, small people of history. They're all there. <coughs> Douglas. Uh, we know when believers get their body back. I mean, because it's the same thing. They've been destroyed and just everything dust to dust. But at the rapture, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive shall be called together. And then our bodies are with our spirit eternally. Uh, so when do the unbelievers, the dead in Christ, get their bodies? Hang on, hang on. I think he'll answer that here shortly. Ah. Okay. Uh, next phrase says, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Okay, so we have here books plural and book singular. It's very important. The distinction between books plural and book singular. What is written in the books, plural? The works. The works. Of whom? The unbelievers. The unbelievers. Now, my guess is every, every unbeliever has their own book. Uh, that would make sense to me. There, there are plural books. You've got a plurality of people. Probably every unbeliever has his own book of works. This is your life. This is what you've done. And then there's a, another book, which is the book of life. All right. Then it says, uh, the last part of verse 12, the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Well, why would these unbelievers need to be judged um, according to their work. What? In, in comes the degrees of uh, torment in hell. In okay. They have the standard, which would have been perfection. Okay. There, well, I've, gotten, I've gotten two different answers here. The book of life and would show that. I've gotten two different answers, and I think they're both accurate. Okay, let's go over yours again. Did, um, now, let, let me start with Wes. Okay. What was yours, Wes? To show that their works did not measure up to God's standard. If they had lived a perfect life, they'd be in. They, they'd have made it. So it shows that they didn't meet that perfected standard that they would have needed to. Very good. That's well put. Anybody have a question about what Wes said? Yeah, which book is he talking about? The book of life or the other books? Books. 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 Each of their books. They were judged book. according to their <laughs> work. This is the last part of verse 12. The dead were judged according to their works by the things which are written in the book. Books, plural. Plural. But the book of life, that would have to do with eternal life, which they don't have. They right. wouldn't be in it. Right. And that's one of the dead. Right. So they're being judged by the books, which would be their... I'm thinking on how much was revealed to them that they rejected. You know what I'm saying? Which makes it worse for a non-believer. Everything. Well... It's when we get to, to when, when we get to the book of life, that'll underscore what you're saying. But taking it a step at a time, the first step is what's in those books. And Wes said, their works prove that they don't have works that earn that say I deserve a place in the new earth. My works fall short. Paul said in Romans, by works of the law no flesh will be justified. By works, nobody will be justified. What's justified mean? Declared, Declared righteous. righteous. No, God will not say to one person, oh, because of your works, I'm declaring you righteous. Why, why not? What are, yeah, those works are unrighteous. All people have unrighteous works, including every one of us 
here in this room. Uh, our works are unrighteous. God can't say, well, I declare you righteous when the books show I'm not righteous. So that's the first purpose. You know, here, we remember, these people have been in county jail. Now they're coming to get their day in court. They think they're, they don't think they deserve this. A lot of them, some do, but many of them don't think they deserve it. They need their day in court. So the judge says, let's open the book. Let's examine your life. There's specifically, we've all studied before, that there's going to be a lot of people that know exactly who Jesus is, and they're going to think they did a bunch of really good things. Yeah, look what I did here. Yeah, look what we did. I, I'm not supposed to be here. And he says, right. Right. I never knew you. Yeah. There's been a mistake. <laughs> exactly. And they're going to believe it. They're going to believe it. They're going to believe it. And we're going to we're going to see that at a later passage. But there there will be people at this judgment that will appeal. They will appeal their what the judge says. They will say no. Look again. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Stevie, what's the second reason for the book? Uh, well, as, was, as you stated in, in the criminal process, uh, manslaughter and murder one have different consequences. Uh, the books I see are all the things that you did during your period of time on, on this earth. Or didn't do. But, or didn't do. But the severity... Uh, that book is going to find the severity of your torment in hell. Exactly. It, and we saw this in previous week. Jesus said it won't be the same for everybody in hell. Right? He said it will be more tolerable for some than others. And this is where this will be. So there's, in, in my view, I agree with Wes and Stevie. I think it makes sense that there's two purposes for the books. One is to demonstrate that you, you don't deserve, you haven't earned uh, uh, a place, a different place, and or you haven't earned eternal life because you can't with, by your work. Second is to determine the degree of torment in the uh, lake of fire. It's like, it's like a balance here. Like your good works go on this side, your bad work go on this side. I mean, ultimately, that's, that's going to determine where you are, what level of performance you yeah. are. Some people get five years, some people get life and ten. <laughs> right. You know, the, the sad thing about it is your good work could be way, way up here and you're still not yeah, believe. Right. Yeah, that's right. So we have, a, have more, good. Good. an unbeliever could have more good works than any of us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're good people. Because they lived, that, that's what they were living for, was mm -hmm. trying to be yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Well, you could have uh, humpteen billion good in your mind, good works, yeah. and then along comes uh, this bad thing that you did, and it wipes out all those others. It overrides those others. Uh, yes and no. Look, the books are going to record all the works, not just the bad, but the good. But these good works, even the good works, won't earn them eternal life. They don't, they don't count really matter. Well, they count for less tolerable, less, more, more tolerable. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, is, any more questions on verse 12? So we can say that the book of life is a record of where someone will spend eternity, and the other books are. Yes, uh, you're getting ahead a little, but that's good. Go ahead and say it. I'm not sure everybody heard you. That's a good summary. I'm just wondering if we can say that the book of life is a record of where someone will spend eternity, <clears throat> and then the other books are a record of the quality of that ex of the experience. Yes. In whatever place here. Isn't there another place where it says they looked in the, was almost a book of life, but and their names weren't written in it? So it's it's is that here. The same book for the righteous and the unrighteous. It's the same book of life. 
Yeah, we're going to get to that. That's the last verse here, but yes. Let's go to verse 13. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one, according to his works. Okay. Uh, now, what would it mean the sea gave up the dead who were in it? Okay, I heard a couple of different <laughs> comments. I think it means literally what it says that the sea, what, who, who's been in the sea that's Sailor. <laughs> sailor. Pirate, sailor. People that People died at sea. Ships. And I think there's a reason for bringing this up, but I think there's a reason for the writer, or for John bringing it up. What part of these people has been in the sea? Their physical bodies. Their physical bodies. Now, where, when, it, when this sailor fell into the sea back a thousand years before Christ, when he was out in a boat, What's happened to his body in the last 3,000 years? It's still there. It's still there. It just looks different. <laughs> <laughs> the material doesn't go anywhere. It just gets dispersed. The reason this is brought up is because you either died on land or you either died in, in the water. Well, you're in the land or you know, in the water. You're, you're in one of those two places. Your, your, body, your body's either in dirt or water. Yeah. Right? Now we might say for those that have been cremated, some of the, their ashes might have gone up, but eventually I, I would guess I'm not a scientist. Even if you got burned on the beach, somebody you went there, somebody you went there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that the sea is brought up here and not the earth to emphasize the fact that who's gonna whose bodies will be raised? Everybody. And I get asked this question all the time. Well, what happens if you're cremated? Will you still get resurrected? Yeah. Have you ever heard that? I mean, people ask that. That's a question. Oh, I'm worried about my loved one that got cremated. I don't know what, are they going to get resurrected? And I, I refer to this passage because this passage says that pe even people that died at sea are going to be bodily raised. Of course, these are unbelievers, but if it's true for unbelievers, certainly it's true for believers that the bodies of believers will be raised, even those that died at sea or those that were uh, burned, cremated. Well, it says uh, later, uh, down a little bit, in, uh, in death and Hades gave up their dead. Well, we already said Hades is hot. How hot is it? Well, what part of the people have been in Hades? Their soul or their spirit, right? You know, when a believer dies, spirit goes to heaven, body in the ground. When an unbeliever dies, spirit goes where? Hades. Body goes where? Ground or sea. So here I think the emphasis is the whole person is raised. The, the spirits of the unbelievers are reunited with their bodies on this day of the resurrection of unbelievers. So this is a new thought to lots of people. Unbelievers are going to be resurrected. Their bodies will be resurrected. What will be the difference between their bodies and the bodies of believers? Sit. Sit. Bodies. Yeah, our bodies will be glorified. Their bodies will not be glorified. Um, they, yeah, they won't experience a lot. A lot of what we'll experience, I think, we'll stop there and pick it up uh, next week.